Hello and welcome back to another Computer Sluggish tutorial. I've been asked, how do you make a YouTube banner? Well today in this video I'm going to show you how to make a YouTube banner that's going to look like this. To start off with, you need paint.net. If you don't have paint.net, I will put a link in the description below on how to get paint.net and set it all up. Right, once you've opened up paint.net, you need to go to this image, which is also in the description below, the link. All the images I'm using in this video, they are all below. You need to right click and go copy, and we're gonna go to paint.net. You now need to go file, and we're gonna go to new, and we're gonna press okay. Once you've done that, you can hold control and scroll out a bit on your mouse, and we're gonna go control and V, which pastes the image in. Once you've done that, we're going to select our rectangle tool, and we're just going to simply select this center bit, like that, and we're just gonna hit delete as it does make life a lot easier doing this. You'll understand in a bit. Right, now you need to go back to our web browser and you need to click on the next link, which will be this image. We're gonna right click and go copy image and we're gonna go back to our paint.net and we're now going to create a new layer. We're now going to drag this layer below the background image and we're gonna go control and V and we want to keep the canvas size. And as you can see straight away, our image is now pasted in. We want to hold down shift and grab the corner and we want to drag in the image, making sure that it still fills the whole image. And about there is actually quite decent. I'm actually quite happy with how that is, but you can move the image around if you want. But to be honest, that's probably about right there. Make sure the image obviously does fill the whole image. As you can see, my lines are on the outside of the image, which is absolutely fine. Once you're happy with that, you can then select the rectangle select tool and just click off. We're done with that. That's fine. Next up, we want to tweak this image a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to effects and we're going to go to blurs and then we want to go to Gaussian blur which is the second option down we're going to select that and we're going to set the blur to 14 you can tweak it down if you want or tweak it up it's totally up to you it depends how much blur you want added to the image but I kind of like the blur on 14 I think that's just about right um, yeah I like that and once you once you're happy with your blur you can press OK and next we want to go to adjustments and we want to go to the saturation button here. Once you clicked on that we want to change our saturation to 170. As you can see the image color has changed. It was originally set at 0 which is there. But I actually like 170 but you can choose whatever color you want. Um, you can go all the way up to 200 if you want, but to me that is a little bit too blue. I found 170 is just about right. There we go. And once you're happy with that, you do need to click down for it to set. Once you're happy with that, we can press OK. And the next thing to do is actually type in the text. You need to select your text tool, which is on the left hand side here and we're going to be using font impact. Once you've selected impact, which you can do by selecting the drop down, we're going to select the size at 192 and we want to put bold on and we want to put the italics on. Once you're happy with that, we need to create a new layer and we're going to just click on that new layer, which is layer three, and we're going to type in your name. I'm just going to type in literally your name Make sure you've got caps lock on as well because it does look better in caps. As you can see, I've now put your name and we're just going to center that up. Once you're happy with that, you can now just press off by pressing this little mouse button which deselects it. We now want to duplicate that layer. To do this, make sure layer 3 is still selected and we're going to select this button here which says duplicate layer. 
We're now going to drag it down a little bit. You can do it whichever way you want. You can have it to the left. You can have it to the right. You can have it a little bit up. It's totally up to you. But I like to have it a tad down to the right like that. And we're now going to select off again. And we're going to select a layer free. Um, no, we're going to keep that layer selected. Sorry, ignore that. And we're going to go to adjustments. And we want to go to brightness, contrast. And we're just going to set it to as dark as we can. Yeah, which is minus 100 and minus 100. And we're going to press OK. And we now need to drag that layer free down. And as you can see straight away, it's now below your name. If we just hold down control and zoom in, there you go, you can see that. If you want to actually have that shadow effect even darker than what it is there, you can always select your paint bucket, select your black color, or you could always go with red, it's totally up to you. And then just simply go along and click on each bit. But I'm going to control and set that as I'm happy with the color of that. We're now going to hold down control and zoom out again. And next we need to get our social media buttons. To do this you need to go to the links that are in the description below. And we're just going to right click and go copy image. We're going to go back to paint. And we're going to create a new layer again. I'm just going to drag that above the layer freeze there. Actually, whilst you're at it, if you want, if you select this top layer free, which was our text layers, if I just hide that look, you can see. And if you click on this button here, it merges the layers together. There you go. Which means now that is all one layer. Right, if we select our layer 5 again, which is our new layer, and we go Control and V, as you can see, we've got our social media button. We're just going to hold down shift and grab the corner. And we're just going to shrink it down till you're happy with the size. Once you're happy with the size you've got, we're just going to simply drop it down. I like to have the Instagram to the right and then Twitter to the left. But that is totally up to you how you want it. We're now going to select our rectangle and select off. And we're going to go back to our web browser. Or for you, you're going to go to the link that's in the description below. And we're going to copy the Twitter image. And we're going to do the same again. Go back to paint.net. We're now going to create another new layer, which will be layer 5. And we're going to go Control and V. And as you can see, we've got our Twitter logo. We're now going to hold down Shift and grab the corner. And we're just going to shrink it down. Until it's about the same size as our Instagram logo. And we're just going to drop that down. I think the Instagram's a tad bigger. There we go. And we're just going to drop that down till we're happy. Which would be about there. You can actually rename these layers to make life easier. If you keep forgetting which layer you're on. For example here on my layer 5. If I double click it. I can name that one to Twitter. Logo. There we go, and press OK, and my layer 5 there as well. See, look, it can get quite complicated because it keeps calling layers the same stuff. I could call that one Instagram logo, and press OK. And just to make sure that's right, if I just deselect Instagram, it hides it, as you can see. Right, now we need to do our text for the logos. To do this, we're going to create another new layer. And we're going to call this one here, we're going to call this your name again, which you would put your Twitter name. And then on the Instagram one, you would put your Instagram username. I'm just going to type your name like that. And I'm going to change that to white. And for the size, I found size 48 was probably about the right size. You can have it a little bit bigger if you want. And also, actually, I want that in caps because it looks better. Your name, like that. And also, turn off italics. There we go. That, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And we're going to do the same again. We're going to create another new layer. And we're going to create a text. And we're just going to type in your Instagram username. Which I'm just going to put your name. 
There we go. And that can go there. And now you can just simply play around with it all, make sure everything's centered up to how you like it. I mean, that is pretty spot on, to be honest. I'm happy with that. And now we need to save our banner as a JPEG. But before we do this, we need to deselect this background, the top one, which will remove that gray background. And as you can see, there is our complete banner. Now we need to go to the top left hand corner and click file and we need to go down to save as and we're going to go to our desktop or you can save it wherever you want and we're going to click on save as type and we're going to select JPEG and we're now going to name the file name just as YouTube banner and we're going to go save and we need to press OK and flatten. Now we need to go to our YouTube channel and upload the banner. So once you're on your YouTube channel, as you can see here, in the top right hand corner, you've got a camera logo. We're going to click on that and we're now going to select a photo from your computer. We're now going to go to the location of where we saved our file. Mine was on my desktop and we're just going to open it up. Once it's finished uploading, you can adjust the crop if you want. But as you can see, that is pretty center. That is spot on. We're now going to go select. And as you can see, it's saving. And there you go. There is our new banner. And it's as easy as that. I hope this tutorial helped. If it did, hit the like button below and subscribe for more computer sluggish tutorials.